Merry Christmas Eve, Bridgeway. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angels' voices. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. Well, we love Christmas. It's a holiday that we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just thank all of the musicians and all of the producers and those who serve in the creative arts ministry for blessing our hearts and consistently lifting up our spirits uh, as we see how amazing the God who is with us is. God with us. It's what we talked about on Sunday. We'll talk about it in the next couple of weeks. But today I want to talk about uh, that name, Emmanuel, and God being with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. You know, it was prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was born in the book of Isaiah that Jesus would be born by a virgin. It's uh, Isaiah 714. Let me read it. It says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will be called Emmanuel. Now we find out hundreds of years later uh, that what Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 7, 14, Matthew quoted in Matthew chapter 1, verses 23 and 24, and Matthew actually translates what Emmanuel means. Let me read Matthew 1, 23 and 24. It says, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him, listen, Emmanuel, which means God with us. In this sermon, God with us, we're going to be reminded of what we talked about last week or last Sunday, and that is this. God is our security. God is our sufficiency. God is our company. He's our security in that he protects us. He's our sufficiency in that he provides a very present help in trouble. He's our company because the Lord Almighty is with us. And Isaiah not only quotes or prophesies that the, that the Lord would be born to a virgin in Bethlehem, but also Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6, tells us about who this Savior will be. And his name is not just Emmanuel. In fact, in chapter 9, verse 6 of Isaiah, listen to what it says. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, listen, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. <laughs> God with us means that we get all that comes with God. God with us means that we get all that comes with God. God with us means that all of who God is comes with him to us. And so what does it say about him? It says in 714, he's Emmanuel, God with us. But in 9-6 of the book, it tells us who we get with this God. So you not only have God with you, but you get, get what comes with him. Well, what comes with him? He tells us four things. He says, first of all, he'll be known as a wonderful counselor. So what do we get? We get God's comfort. You see, a wonderful counselor means God's comfort. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is known as a counselor. There's also scripture that talks about a counselor as our defender or our paraclete, as the original language in the Greek would say. That's one who stands alongside of us and defends us. And here it says he's a wonderful counselor. If you've ever been to court before and you needed a lawyer to defend you, they call lawyers a counselor. Why? Because if you need that lawyer to defend you, he stands or she stands in your stead before you to defend you and protect you. And that becomes quite a comfort for those who need a lawyer. Well, guess what? The Lord himself, Emmanuel, who was with us, brings with him who he is, and his name is Wonderful Counselor. We get God's comfort. But secondly, what we get with God who is with us is the fact that not only is he a wonderful counselor, but he's a mighty God. You see, we not only get his comfort, but we get his capacity. The capacity of his power, the capacity of his strength. It says that he is a mighty God. So not only will he comfort us, but he will fight for us. We get a mighty God. No one can beat God. And so while Jesus comes as a frail baby boy, he has 
chosen to put himself in the frail humanity so that he could live what we live and feel what we feel. But understand this, we're talking about a mighty God who chose to humble himself, as Philippians 2 says, chose to empty himself of the divine prerogatives and and, and the pleasures of heaven so that he could come down to handle the sin and the penalty of eternal damnation on our behalf. But when God comes to be with us, we also get that which comes with God, and that is his comfort, that is his capacity, and thirdly, that is his compassionate command. It says that not only is he a wonderful counselor, not only is he a mighty God, but he's an everlasting father. That's compassionate command. You know, Psalm 103 says that the Lord is compassionate like a, like a father. Maybe some of you don't know a father that's compassionate, but your heavenly father is. But he's also a God who's in command, a God who's in control. There's nothing like Big Daddy at home and he's got everything under control. You know that everything's going to be just fine if Daddy's home and he's compassionate and handles you like a like a child that he loves. While at the same time, the whole house is under his covering and under his command. That's the way it's supposed to be. And it says that this savior will not only be a wonderful counselor, will not only be a mighty God, but will be an everlasting father. How relational is that? Not only is he God, but he's father. Not only is he comforter, but he's also commander. But then it says a fourth and a final thing in that Isaiah 9, 6 passage. It says that he is the prince of peace. That means we get God's calm. Ah, No more strife, no more struggle. You can have a peace and a calm in your spirit. You get God's comfort. You get God's capacity. You get God's compassionate command and you get God's calm. God is never stressed. God is calm because he knows who he is. And as a result, when you are in him and when he comes to be with you, he brings a calm into your spirit, a calm into your orbit a calm into the eternal destiny of your soul that settles you in a deep place no matter what's going on around you or around your family or around the world. You see, Jesus came into the world not just to bring salvation. Yes, that's true. But ultimately, Jesus came into the world to bring you him. Comfort the capability and the capacity to have the power that is necessary in order to live in this world. The compassionate command and the safety and security of being under the covering of your heavenly father. And you also get the calm in your spirit that comes with the Prince of Peace. You know, several days ago on an open phone in Friday, a guy named Jackson I may have referred to before called in because he wanted to talk to me about his woman. But you know what he got instead? He got much more than just advice about this woman that he's dating. I want to cut to the scene where you can actually listen to the conversation for about five to seven minutes. And then I'm going to come back on the other side and we're going to pray that these aspects of God that are now in Jackson's life will be in your life as well. Check out this phone call on the radio show, Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson. Talk to me directly, sir. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking a lot of things. I'm just working up here. I'm actually from uh, Arkansas, so I'm just up here working for a couple of months. Okay. Um, I got a I got a quick question. Just throw it out to me. Um, I'm dating a girl. She's going going on five years. She's uh big into church. Um, I used to be. I, I believe and uh, I believe everything about the Bible, but uh, I don't go as much as she does. Okay. And she kind of doesn't really accept that, but, you know, I am who I am, but she doesn't accept who I am. Okay. And uh, I'm trying, she's a wonderful woman, don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay. But uh, I just can't, I, I, it's not that I want to, I just, I, I think, and I told her one time, I said, I don't have to believe in God to go to church, mm-hmm. you know, and, and she maybe took that wrong or, Whatever the situation may be, but uh, she's quite a difficult person. Hmm. And uh, 
I'm now, learning. I'm learning. Now, let me ask you, did you mean that you didn't, you don't have to believe in order to go to church or you don't have to go to church in order to believe in God? Well, I, I used to go to church. I, I went to church till I was like 18 and then uh, I'm 58 now, but uh, I, I could honestly say I haven't been to church in probably 35 years. Okay. When I did go, to, when I went to Virginia a couple years ago, she, she, I flew her up there and, you know, I, I, I did go to church where they're on Sunday. Okay. But, you know, uh, I travel every every year, every winter, so she mm-hmm. doesn't have the opportunity to come up here. But when I'm back home, um, I, I guess I'm—I don't want to say I'm particular, but I just want to find a church where, you know, I can, I can relate to. Understood. And and a lot of people need a church that they can relate to to help them grow spiritually. The purpose of church is to help us grow spiritually and to be in fellowship with other believers. And a lot of people go to church and they don't find that. They don't find the fellowship. They don't find the spiritual growth. But the key is to grow spiritually. And so let's talk about your spiritual growth apart from church. Church is supposed to aid that growth, right? But let's talk about your spiritual growth. Where do you feel like you are in your relationship with God right now? That's a difficult question. (laughs) Um, I honestly can't answer that. I really can't. You know, I've been here for a month, and I've been listening to uh, Chuck Swindell. Swindell. Mm-hmm. Swindell. Yeah. Swindell. Yeah. I've been listening to him for the last, you know, couple of couple of weeks, and I only got fifteen minutes because you know, it's on my drive to work. Right. But he is. Uh, he's he's quite the. Uh, he's quite the man, uh, and I'm I'm learning from him how I should have treated her three, four, or five years ago. Wow. So you're getting good, good practical uh, teaching and inspiring you to do better. I really, really love that because when you do uh, come closer to the Lord, he wants to improve your relationships and improve your life. But here's the thing. Uh, you can do all the behavior modification and self-improvement and listen to good messages. It still won't get you into a deeper relationship with God if you don't first invite him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. That's where it really begins. And once that happens, then you'll begin to grow differently and God will begin to transform you, not from the outside in where you can apply principles and techniques and treat her better and things of that sort, but he'll actually start changing Jackson from the inside and start changing all the stuff on the inside. And you'll find that it'd be more a more intimate relationship with God. And then what will happen is all those other things that you're talking about, they'll fall into place. But scripture says, seek first, you know, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added. And so it's just about priorities. And right now, the number one priority that God has in store for you, what he wants more than anything else is a relationship with you. So have you ever, have you ever prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord and savior, Jackson? I have not. Mm-hmm. I may have when I was younger, but you know that was years ago. Okay. Do, can I do I do I do that on my own? Do I do that? Mm-hmm. Well, kneeling next to my bed. I mean, right. Well, believe it or not, anywhere you pray, it's basically praying and saying, "Dear Jesus, uh, I want you into my life, and I want to be saved. I want to know what it means to follow you. I need you to change me from the inside out. I, I make a decision by faith." to follow you. It's that simple. It's realizing that you, you're a sinner like I am. You know, we've sinned against God and it screws our whole world up. But then God loves us so much. He sends Jesus to fix it all up and to pay the penalty of that sin on the cross. So they died on the cross, rose again from the dead and paid everything you ever did wrong, past, present and future. All of it he took to the cross. And so he forgives you as soon as you ask and say, please forgive me coming into my life. Boom. That's that's what happens. And you don't have to. I mean, yes, you can do it by yourself. You can do it in the truck. You can do it by your bed. You can even do it on the radio. I mean, you could do it right now if you wanted to. Is there anything keeping you from doing that with me right now? No, there isn't. Would you want to no. pray? Would you want to pray and invite Christ into your life in this moment? I would if you if you help me. Yeah. OK, well, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm, in fact, I'm privileged. Okay. Uh, to help you. So I'll just ask all the listeners to join me in praying for you, because if you really believe what we're about to say, all the angels in heaven are going to throw a big party because God's been waiting for this for you for a long time. So 
Uh, how about I say the prayer and you just repeat after me, use whatever words you want to or use my words, but you just have to believe it in your heart. Are you ready? Let me compose myself. All right. Okay. 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 All right, that's all right. Here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. First, God, I just want to thank you for Jackson. And I want to thank you that you, he called and that he got through and that you purposed this moment right now in his life at 58 years old. And he says he wants to come into a relationship with you. And so, Lord, right now we're going to pray the sinner's prayer. And if you'll repeat after me, Jackson, just say, dear God. Dear God. I know that I am a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that I am separated from you. And I know that I have separated from you. And I don't want to be separated anymore. I don't want to be separated anymore. Please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for all my sins. I invite you into my life right now. I invite you into my life right now please to be my Lord and Savior to be my Lord and Savior I place my faith in you now Jesus I place my faith in you now Jesus thank you for saving me thank you for saving me thank you for this new life thank you for this new life I'm going to have in Jesus' name in Jesus' name Amen. Amen and amen. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. How are you feeling? I feel like breaking down, man. <laughs> you can. And you can cry as many happy tears as you want because the Bible says that you've just crossed over from death to life. Wow. Emotional, right? Jackson got much more than advice about a woman. He got the truth of a man that is now with him for all of eternity. He just invited Christ into his life. And did you see the comfort, the calm, the capacity and capability of, of God all in him? The compassionate father waited for, waited for Jackson. He was 58 years old and he's waiting for you as well. The best Christmas gift you will ever, ever get, the best present you'll ever get, is the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Would you like to invite Jesus to be the best Christmas present you'll ever get? He promises to be present with you. But like Jackson, you must fall on your knees. Hear the angels' voices. That's the Holy Spirit speaking into your, in, through your phone and, and, and through your television. And, and while you're there in your bed or sitting on the couch or in your car, this is the Lord speaking to you. And he says, Christmas is not about anything else except the very presence of Emmanuel. Pray with me and invite Christ into your life. Say, dear Jesus, be my Emmanuel. Be with me. Be my wonderful counselor. Be my mighty God, my everlasting father, my prince of peace. I invite you into my life on this Christmas Eve. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.